Hello, this is Pastor Johnston as we continue our week together of Matins of Morning Prayer. And our devotion will continue to come from uh, a reading that we have in St. Luke's Gospel, Chapter 1, the Magnificat, the Song of Mary, which we've broken into five parts. Uh, if you want to follow along then at home, once again, this is St. Luke's Gospel, Chapter 1, and we will be picking up with verse 50 today. The order of service for Matins for Morning Prayer is found in Christian Worship, the Wisconsin Senate's new hymnal, the blue hymnal, page 207. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Praise and thanks to God. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hands. The heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. We continue then in St. Luke's Gospel with the Magnificat, the Song of Mary, verse 50 and his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation he has shown the strength with his arm he has shown strength with his arm he has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts he has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate mary here summarizes how god acts throughout the entirety of the scriptures and if you uh have read through any of the Old Testament recently, you'll recognize this as a pattern there. St. Paul points this out in his letter, to, uh, in his first letter to the Corinthians, that God often chooses the least of those that he has to choose from, right? Whatever group, whatever individual it might be. That his wisdom often appears folly to the world and that his wisdom turns the world's wisdom into folly. God again and again in the Old Testament chooses those who no one else would choose for the, the task that he chose them for. Jesus does a similar thing and in many instances with the apostles. He's certainly done the same thing with me and I'm guessing most of you would admit he's done the same with you. The Lord chooses those who are humble. Sometimes we like to think of humility as something that we can cultivate in ourselves, that we can teach ourselves that we can produce ourselves but that's really not usually the case humility is something that is taught to us we are humble and life has a way of doing that it has the way a way of washing off the veneer the makeup of the superficialities that we put upon our our own selves false virtue upon our lives he has a way of showing us our, our faults, God does as well as life, our weaknesses, and most importantly, our dependence upon others, upon him, upon our family, upon our community, upon the nation where we find ourselves. We're not islands unto ourselves. We're not nearly as uh, self-dependent, as, as, as independent as we think we might be. But the Lord doesn't humble us as many in the world would, would humble us, right? Sometimes you've maybe watched a, a game of sports or you, you've watched a, a, a show that has a competition, whatever it might be, musical or something else, and someone delights in defeating another, right? They don't just humble the other, but they strive to humiliate them. That is not what God seeks to do with us. No, our humiliation is to be found in Christ's humiliation, who, who took on humility for us. What God does rather is he works through these things, these things that would remind us of our own frailty and weakness and dependence to make sure that we remember, that we realize and then remember that our hope is in his mercy. He did this with Israel and Judah again and again in the Old Testament as he would use another power to punish one of them 
to humble them when they had got too big for their bridges and forgotten who it was who had given them their home and their safety. And yet he would punish that same power for having punished his people. Our God is a God of mercy, and sometimes he then reminds us of that. Give thanks for the times when you are humble. Savor that humility that the Lord teaches you. Because that humility reminds us of the humility of the one to whom Mary gave birth. She who was chosen despite her humble estate. The humility of the one to whom she gave birth, who always put us first, even unto obedience, unto death, on the cross. So give thanks when you are humbled, because it's an opportunity to remember God's mercy, and in his mercy to find security and hope and joy. We pray, Lord, humble us. Humble us each day of our lives. Uh, take our freedom, take our understanding, our memory, our will, and make them your own. And teach us to delight in having them conformed to you. Remind us that in your mercy we have peace and joy and freedom and hope and love and the ability to serve those around us in meaningful ways. Let your mercy be our anchor. Let your mercy ever be our joy. Let your mercy be our future. Amen. We continue with the Te Deum. We praise you, O God, we acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing an endless praise. Holy, 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 Lord God of heavenly hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the church world, the holy church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your glorious, true, and only Son, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you humbled yourself to be born of a virgin. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You sit at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Hear my voice when I call, O Lord, be merciful and answer me. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And we join to pray as Jesus himself has taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.